Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another video from JP Tech. In this video, we're going ballistics on Zen 2. This is the Crucial Ballistics Sport 3000 megahertz CL15 kit. Runs about $75. This is their pretty bare bones memory, if you will. This is a 16 gig kit, two 8 gig sticks. I'm running it in this video. The test configuration is an X570 Hero Wi Fi model by Asus. I'm running the latest BIOS to include the ABBA Ajiza upgrade or update, excuse me. Now this memory, these memory modules are Micron e die. When I pulled the information through Typhoon and into the DRAM calculator, it estimated the quality at 101% for these modules. I have not bought enough of these kits to know how common that quality percentage is. So maybe I have a really good kit, maybe I have a normal kit. Who really knows? Now I want to first start off by saying that there's significant value here even if you don't overclock the memory. It's it's good affordable memory that gets the job done probably for the vast majority of people especially running lower end hardware that aren't concerned about chasing the highest frame rates they can for competitive or just a good high refresh gaming experience. If you're just you know if you don't care too much about getting always getting over 100 FPS or getting as many frames as you can then the 3000 megahertz DOCP profile is going to be just fine for you. But if you're like me and you want to uncork a lot of hidden potential, uh, performance potential that is with Zen, any level of Zen really, but today we're talking about Zen 2, and you want all the, uh, all the frame rate that you can get basically, you're going to want to overclock this memory and there is a lot of mileage here through memory overclocking. Now this stuff isn't quite at least with this kit and my experience with testing it, it isn't quite B die levels, but boy does it get pretty close. I was able to achieve 3466 MHz CL14. I'll put those timings up on the screen now. I am using 1.45 volts on the DRAM. And uh, overall, the performance that comes out of running the memory at this speed is fantastic. And when you attach that to the $75 price tag that this memory carries, it's just, it's absolutely phenomenal. I think even if you're doing a budget build, getting the $75 16 gig kit and spending a little bit of time with the DRAM calculator and in your BIOS, I, I think it's worth every bit of the time and the little bit of money that this kit costs. You're going to unlock performance significant performance for free essentially in my testing on battlefield 5 underground or operation underground i saw very often i saw the 90s running the micron memory on just the dlcp profile and and this is pretty common it's almost like it doesn't even matter what kit i run between 3000 and 3600 megahertz if it's on the DLCP profile, it's just not giving the most ideal performance for Zen, and that's just what it is. Even the expensive G-Skill Neo 3600 CL14 kit I recently bought, you know, it's some of the best that you can run on the profile, if not the very best, but there's still just extra there from tweaking the sub-timings. Anyways, I went from seeing 90 FPS pretty commonly on this underground map to usually not being anywhere near that. There, in most cases, there was like a 20, 30 FPS increase just from spending the time on raising the clocks and tightening up the timings on this memory. And at this point, I've run 36, 3466 at CL14 for a lot of hours in, in games and uh, it's made it through my stability testing and everything else. So I feel confident running this on a pretty regular basis. You can, of course, pull back the timings a little bit if you want to reduce the voltage and, and thus the heat on the memory. But I like that performance too much. I have found stability with the kit and uh, that's how I would choose to run this particular EDI memory, in, in my opinion. 
I'm not at that 3600 CL14 B die goodness at this point, but boy am I that much closer. And if you need to save money, I, I really like where this E die puts you performance wise. If you like RGB, they do have this kit in RGB for a little bit more money. It's like $97, so it's like roughly, you know, 20 something more dollars than this more bare bones kit that I have. The heat spreaders on here are pretty thin in comparison to something like the G Skill Tridents. Um, but I mean, you get what you pay for. It's very cheap memory with good overclocking potential. Not really much to complain about here. You also don't get temperature sensors like you do on most B die memory, or at least most of the G Skill B die memory that I've had hands on. But again, there is a cost difference. Uh, 3200 CL14 B die kit or 3600 CL16 B die kit is going to run you about 150, 160 bucks. If you get the RGB stuff, if you get if you get some rip jaws, you can find it for like 120. So there's a price difference that you have to consider. If you want maximum performance, I still find that that's on B die memory. But if you want to get quite close to that for the right price. The e die memory definitely gets my vote, and uh, if I if I had to watch the money I spent on a system right now, I would probably I would get a Ryzen 3600. I would get this memory. I would overclock it as I stated in this video, and uh, I would run an RX 5700, and I would have a very pleasant gaming experience for the right amount of money. But that's it for this video, guys. You guys have been asking for the EDI memory overclock performance results, and here they are. Uh, I'm going to try to look into some more games with this. For You guys always have Battlefield questions, so I get stuck on Battlefield. But I am going to try to branch out, finally, and share some other game footage and show the performance benefit of running the Micron EDI overclocked, like in this video. So if you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more from JP Tech, hit subscribe. And until the next video, guys, I'll see you around.